Oh, close breach. Okay. We've all been there. A guy pops out of nowhere, you're not ready for the fight, and you get completely fried. Maybe you were just holding that angle, and the second you look away, he peeks. The infamous siege timing. But I don't actually believe in siege timing. I believe in problem solving. So how can you completely save yourself from siege timing and instantly improve your R6 game? The rule of the day is information, specifically on the attacking side. And in this exact circumstance, I still had four zero cams in my pocket that would have been super useful to gain some info on this guy. Information is the number one key to success in Rainbow Six, and if you don't believe me, look at how easy it can be to use it to your advantage. White hall, white hall, bottom white, bottom white. Lion call, lion call. Coming up white, Josh, coming up white. I got him. I'm watching his light run away. He's still mid white, mid white. Hold on. One simple drone leads us to a free kill and access to all the defender cameras. And while droning itself is a skill most people could use to blast up in the ranks, there's still a massive variety of information tactics that are even more powerful. For example, on this coastline game using Zero, I was able to ping all the defenders in sight. With my teammates below, they could shoot through the floor, grenade them to the floor, and just absolutely plow them. You tagged him? He's on pick one now? Nade this, nade this, nade this, Ayana. Really dead. Information gives you the power to kill the defenders without them even being able to fight back. They're getting pre-fired, wall banged, grenaded, held by weird off angles, and the opportunity for them to shoot you is just non-existent. We can't talk about information without understanding the boundaries that it's limited to. Information can be quantified. You can have a little bit or you can have a lot. If you want, you can picture it as a line with the quantity of info you have falling somewhere in between. Info also has duration. It can be live information or it can be stale information. So info becomes less and less accurate over time. If you call someone out, the distance they can travel increases by the second. So the more and more different areas they could have traveled to also increases, making the info less accurate. This is why it's very important to have updated or live callouts and why repeating the same call if you don't have info is not ideal. Hence why a call out like last seen blank is the most ideal call out if you are unsure. It allows your teammate to think in their head, hey, he could have traveled here, but I was holding this angle so I know he hasn't crossed to this other area, for example. So based on these concepts, the most ideal situation is to have a large quantity of information that is also relevant or live information. The more information you have and the more accurate it is, the easier it is going to be to win. So when you drone a defender out, get off your drone and then push them, the information isn't live. That defender could have moved in that time period where you got off your drone and then push in, which is why droning in a teammate instead is a much better plan. That that way the information is live and your teammate can capitalize on it. All you need for this is one other person that's on board to walk into the building behind your drone. That's good if you want to take it. Uh, he's, he's about to walk in the door. Yeah, he's the left side of the sunrise door. One armor. Owned. The, bo the bottom metal cam is ours. Sometimes the enemies will have countermeasures though. That might be a Solus, a Mute, a Mozzie, or just hunting down and looking for your drones. And that's part of the reason why I'm so obsessed with Yana. Yana is the number one attacker in the game right now, with two amazing weapons, the best secondary utility in the game, and infinite clones. They do have a cooldown, but you can bust so many of those bad boys out throughout the course of the round. It's just nuts. Now we can't avoid the obvious fact that information is available in much higher quantities when you play in a stack. So so making friends with random teammates who call out and trying to play with as many players as you can who will gather info will help drastically. But if not, there's still lots of tactics throughout this video that you can use while solo to level up your game. We'll talk about a few of those options in a minute, but first let's look and more importantly listen to this round and the power that a stack with quality information can bring you. Yeah, breach charges. I'll clone you. Just hold it. The garage is clear. Hatch is closed. Trench side's good. I'm leaving camp for west. Shot my clone. I'm gonna go around a trench. Lobby. Oh, my door ran out. Oh, that goomine really f***ed me up. Uh, zombie's blue. There's nothing on that barricade. Careful the blue guy. Yeah, one pillar, one blue. Yeah. I should be able to bridge above here, actually. Pillar's tagged. Oh, they're dead. You can, you can plant ace. Uh, another one, another one, you can plant ace. There's one blue, one blue, one blue. I'm yeah, blue door, blue door, blue door. One's connector, connector, blue door, connector, blue door. I got connector, I got connector, hold blue. He's, he's on the zombie bear, he's on the zombie bear. Flash him, flash him. You just pay attention to the blue guy. Yeah. One connector, one connector. Right side of the door. Connector down. 
nice. Smoke right. It's really just a series of micro teamwork that add together to seem like a large amount of coordination. Ace breaches the wall and I drone him in. Meanwhile, the other three are working together to do their own simple task. Once we have control of the site, we can then come together to overwhelm the enemy team with the amount of information and control that we have. Plus, the more information each person on the team gathers individually, the more information you have overall, leading to super easy kills. Yeah, one bathroom. Walk back below, like, Bathroom door dead. Nice. But here you are, no stack, no friends. Seriously, making some friends in your lobbies, it'll change your world. If you still can't manage that, then it's Dokabi time. Now, Yana is still a perfect op for solo as well, but Dok keeps that information more accurate, as you can use the calls as you push to gather information via sound. If you can get a little droning done before this, you're in the ideal spot to make some plays for your team and open up the round. Or, uh, sorry, garage breach, it's all soft. Like, G1, G2. I'm gonna open the con single, give me a second. One in stairs, he's swinging. Oh, you're door, so swamp. One R90. I'm opening, your, I'm opening the con single. Some bikes. We have bikes. Nice. This team went back in the side. Dead man. Room. I'm gonna swap this guy's off. Nice, good job. Oh, nice. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. Nothing's One in master. Team, team flanking right now. I got it, I got it, I got it. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Get him, gamer. Team at R6. Oh, oh. Nice. I have one more threat. Did you notice that flank at the end, though? That's the power of flank drones. That guy could have got one or two of us on that flank if we didn't have that info, which could completely turn the round in their favor. And that's why we need to talk about drone phase. Drone phase is not phone phase, my friends, but there's a lot of reasons for this. I think the most important of which is how much fun originates in the prep phase. If you want to EMP, I can nade. Do you want to open the left uh, wall first so I can nade the bandit? If you're not using the prep phase well, you're just not going to enjoy the game as much. A lot of the reward factor of Rainbow Six comes from the playmaking, the intelligent side, the countering and contesting of the other team. Running around and shooting people can be fun, but the depth of the game is so vast with so many different abilities that you're only scraping the surface of the entertainment value by playing IQ, Amaru, and Ash every round and not using a single drone. Using your drone in prep phase, finding the site, making a plan, repicking your operator, and then it paying off just how you planned is an awesome experience, but it can't happen without the prep phase. Fundamentally speaking, the prep phase is the ideal time to gather info on the enemy team's setup, operator lineup, and positioning. Placing cut drones during this time allow you to gain free map control, and setting up flank drones is also great, like the flank drone we had for that cave. Hey, right I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh. The drone powers don't stop there though. Not only is droning your team fantastic, but it also can create distraction. Here's a round where thanks to Yana's clone, I could clear lobby quickly, and then the Dokubi call could pin down the location of this poor, poor Oryx. I got in so fast, he didn't even know I was there. After taking out one more and waiting for my team, we started getting the active drone on this last guy, and this is what happened. Yeah, no, he bottom blue, bottom blue. Oh, poor lad. Nice. Good job. Nice. No yeah, clear, Slaskos. Oh. Back to an insight, insight. On bomb. On rotate now. Back to bomb. It's smoke. I'm hard pinging. Uh, I should have told you about This guy is fumbling over his own toes with pressure coming from all sides while he's trying to shoot a drone at the same time. Not only do we have quantity and quality information, but it's also providing our team with a distraction. This video has now become a how not to throw 101 guide apparently because I know some of you guys would still find a way to lose this round. If you find that droning is difficult or maybe Yana is getting picked by your teammates, there are still a variety of options for capitalizing on the info game. Zero is obviously incredible when the defenders don't shoot his cameras, but even when they do, that is still information. If they shoot your cam, it means they're in the nearby area, and in this circumstance, this Azami kept shooting every single cam that I shot in the window, which tells me, okay, he's planning on staying here, this is his spot, and he's not moving. Now, how do we capitalize on that? Well, let's see. Echo shot, he dead. Warden's swinging on the A-bomb. Still double then. Side to side door. I'm zombie dead right now. That's <laughs> on server. Loser! And then there's Bravo, who you can hack the defender cams with and actually use them against themselves. On top of that, with a fantastic loadout, it looks almost too easy to capitalize on the information that she brings. That's on the bunker, bunker, bunker. Like bunker, bunker, yeah. Now I'm gonna open your wall here for an angle. Oh, I missed. Oh my god, you guys are so good. Yeah, go and see shit. Is it dead? Uh, I'm dropping with you, I'm dropping with you. I One, one white door, white door, white door. Or pixel door. Yeah. Pixel door. Uh, on B2, B2 and cocktail. Might be freezer. B2 still? B2 still? Castle? B2? Nice team R6. One was right side cocktail. Right side, right side cocktail. Oh, yeah, I'm playing. Yo, white stairs, white stairs on the stacks. 
Sometimes though, Yana, Zero, or Brava are still not enough info, and as a final resort, you can pull out the ultimate information operator, Montang. Monty is the literal sacrifice of a weapon in order to gather more info. By having a fully extended shield, he's practically invincible if you play him in a passive manner. You can call out, make plans, and arrange your team in ideal spots to pinch defenders and win the round. If you can hold this door, I can walk in the right side. I gotcha, I gotcha. He's gonna pick me. Drop whenever. Oh my god. I can't see nothing. Can you stim yourself or no? Yeah, I can stim myself. Just give me a couple seconds. I got it. Okay, I'm the door. One VIP. Oh, uh, top metal, top metal. One VIP, VIP, swing ash. Swing ash, swing, swing, swing. <laughs> play it, just play it. Walk in 10. 25. 75 top. Oh, juice. Get me the juice. And when you haven't picked Monty and all else fails during the round, quick peeking is what can save the day. Quick peeks are information. They can bait out shots and tell you the position of the defender. Learning to quick peek can be difficult, but really it just takes practice. I have a nine minute video that shows you exactly how to do this if you'd like to learn, but with 18 HP, it's the reason I was able to win this round. Give me a sec, I'm gonna come down to you. Almost top store, he's close to rotate and supply. Nice. I didn't get it. No way, yes, it's a quick grenade. Oh, yeah. There's blue door on the right, it sounds like. You know what that means? Yep. Heard that. Right side, so. oh, oh, my God. God. oh my God. Now let's swap to defense for a second. When the other team is completely abusing you with information, what can you do? Well, if you're worried about getting bullied by info or just want to learn the art of misinformation, you can watch this video right now to become Captain Counter Info and take over your defense round. Smash like, subscribe, and we'll see you Saturday. Oh, yeah. Hooray!